it was just, it was crazy. It was off the Matter of fact, it was off the chain. I thought I was going to need aspirin, but I tell you what, aspirin experience is the way the sound of, of, of the did reach you. You have some big dreams inside, but how do you see them through? Glitter in the Sun. Pretty awesome because it's uh, uh, based upon the book Twilight. Is that right? It's from Twilight. And, uh, 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 you know, like uh, the Twilight, the, uh, um, come on, y'all, help me with these other, other, the vampire movies, the vampire movies, the werewolf movies. It's uh, uh, Breaking Dawn, stuff like that. Well, anyway, uh, th this Bible, I, I love it because one of the things is, there's something that was, uh, uh, she was able to extract out of the movies uh, of like the Twilight, where Glitter in the Sun actually makes it a, create a Bible study out of it, which we're going to talk about. Yes, it's interesting. And it's, it's in, and I'll put it this way. 
it's in a way like, I'm gonna give a little humor on this, okay? Because this is beautiful. I love the way she did it. It's like, can you imagine uh, uh, be, being a, a, a werewolf or a vampire, right? <laughs> and then I'm soaring in the air, I've transformed, I'm soaring in the air. Next you know it, there's a Bible study going on. And I, as a werewolf or a vampire, and I grab a Bible and I'm heading to church. Can you imagine a vampire heading to church? <laughs> a vampire heading to church? Well, I tell you what. When you get to read this book, you see how it goes hand in hand in such an interesting way. And I'm not saying, ooh, I, you know, didn't dare not touch it. And, and you know, the thing about it is with this book, okay, that she, it's well written, okay, by the way. It's where, it's not just the pros and cons, but actually she put it to where that you study certain things, which I want to get into about, uh, uh, like I like the chapter 10, uh, page 89, I believe, that talks about the, the vegetarian aspects of it compared to vampires, you know, uh, uh, resist the temptation of drinking uh, uh, human blood. Instead, they went to drink animal blood. So that is what's interesting about it. And, and I'm like, wow, interesting concept that she pulled. So grasp that for a moment. A vampire, instead of the drinking human blood, they turned around and went to animals. Well, that's the same as instead of eating meat, we became what? Start doing vegetarian type of eating. And that's how we're going to look at it, okay? So, without saying so, before we, we go into our, our, our PSA, let me share this uh, uh, to you about it. Glitter in the Sun explains the huge popularity of the Twilight Saga through spiritual terms. The themes of eternal and unconditional love expressed by vampires and werewolves are in fact echoes of the way God uh, looks or loves us. I say looks and loves, but loves us. Yes. Uh, um, this is this is a nonfiction Bible study, uh, contemporary culture. It's, uh, again, I say it's awesome. Very thorough. Very thorough. The author, uh, uh, a little bit about the author, Jane Wells, uh, a wife and a mother and right mother of two. A uh, uh, writer whose primary passion beyond her family is helping others understand the deep and abiding love of God of the Bible of the Bible has for his creation. Now, Jane has read and taught women's Bible studies. And I was going to mention that too, the Bible studies. She has taught women Bible studies uh, uh, for, for about four years, four years in the youth ministry. Very good. In the youth ministry. Yes, 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 yes. So I will encourage you to check out this book, and it's called uh, Glitter in the Sun. But we have the author here on the set, and we'll be right back after this.
Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, you know, without further ado, and like I said, that we do have the author, uh, um, Jane Wells, here on the set. So let's bring her out. Yes, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm glad to have you on the set. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here. I'm thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. You, you know what? The uh, um, glitter in the sun. How, um, first of all, how long did it take you to write this? Very, it's very thorough. Thank you. Um, it really, each chapter, I wrote each chapter a week. It was a chapter a week because I, oh. <laughs> um, if I don't have a deadline, nothing gets done. And I okay. taught each chapter as I wrote it. So, mm -hmm. so my, my Bible study group, the women that I was working with, were expecting a new chapter every week. So, so I had that, that built pressure to get it done. done. Otherwise, it, the project would just be probably still sitting on my on a shelf and God would be whispering in my ear saying, you know, <laughs> I gave you something. I've got something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so yeah, so so there was that not only was there that nudge, there was also that built in timeline to get it done. So um but with Christmas break in there and stuff, um it was more than sixteen weeks. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now I the yes. thoroughness, I do want to comment on that. I had some fabulous editors. My publishing house, Read the Spirit, okay. um, brought on some brought on some editors, and, and of course, right now I'm completely blanking. But they, mm -hmm. my editors are fantastic. Um, That's true. Uh, you, a writer is made by his or her editors. That's true. It's, it's That's absolutely true. vital to have good editors that know their stuff and and you know call you on things where maybe you're not quite up to snuff and fix fix all the theological holes that I didn't realize. Oh, and they had to take mm -hmm. out the Nazarene. I speak Church of the Nazarene. I grew up Church of the Nazarene. They had to take the Nazarene out oh. so that everybody else would understand what I was talking about oh. <laughs> and make it more ecumenical. <laughs> yes. you, you know, you did bring, uh, 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 bring a point which I have, uh, definitely want to share. It's about the edit. You know, everybody, everything in, in the publishing world it goes hand in hand. But it, there's nothing like having an editor. A, a good editor actually brings out the author as well mm -hmm. as bringing out the book. But because uh, uh, the author creates the book, the editor creates the author from the book by uh, uh, enhancing the book. Yeah. Okay. So it, it does. It does falls on. You gotta have a good editor. Yeah. You know. That's, yeah. Not a publisher. A publisher's job is to make publish. <laughs> but I'm also say something too out of experience that. Publishers, even though that we have editors on board and proofreaders, it's, don't don't be so much of a stickler not to, at times, go back. It's healthy to take a look at the books, read some of the books, you know, that just put on the sideline, read some of the books, um, um, and see what you see in there. Because, you know, not saying that a publisher should be an editor, that's not what I'm saying, but a publisher should take interest to see how the work is being performed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, I'm going to get into your. Uh, um, let me talk a little bit about this. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to start with this one already before I even get to there. Okay. Okay. Now, yes, I did. I did. I looked at uh, uh, chapter ten, and um, um, and that's in page eighty nine. And I hope I said that right. It's called a vegetarian diet. Ex ex explain a little bit about this on chapter 10. Okay. Um, the, uh, the Cullen family, the, which are the good vampires, the ones that don't eat people, um, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, let me back up how to say this. Carlisle Cullen, the, pat the patriarch of the clan, uh, was, was raised religious. And when 